don't let them fuck with your vibe. Ever let them fuck your vibe. Ever let them fuck up your vibe. Don't ever let them fuck up your vibe. I'm telling you, once you let them fuck up your vibe, they will continuously try to fuck up your vibe. Okay? So, what's up? What's up, divas and devos? So, you guys already know what day it is. It is Wednesday. It's actually really Tuesday. And, okay, so basically, I'm putting on like this fake smile because I'm really not in the best of moods. Okay? So, I hope you guys had like an amazing Thanksgiving and enjoyed your family and friends. Um, mine's was okay. Like it was, let, let me just say this. When I say mine's was okay, meaning it was not like it could have been a whole lot better. You know what I'm saying? Um, a whole lot better. For one, you know, my grandson was born. So it like broke my heart that, you know, I'm here and he's there and we get to FaceTime and everything. And I see him in a couple of months, you know what I'm saying? Like in a month, but it just really bothered me because I was there for my last two grandkids being born. I was there like in the room there, but this time around I wasn't. And it just really did bother me a lot. You know what I'm saying? It took a toll on me. It broke me down and you know, but I was able to FaceTime, which brought me in good spirits. And then like for Thanksgiving, like, you know, Thanksgiving Eve or really on Tuesdays, I do start preparing something. But as I told you guys last week, I really didn't have the opportunity to start on a Tuesday. And when I say start on Tuesday, I mean like make potato salad and macaroni salad and some pies. That's it. So I basically had to do that on Wednesday. And I'm so thankful for my daughter, Nay, who is 16, and my daughter, Mumsy, who is 11. Because if it weren't for them two, I would have really been struggling and I would have really had been tired and in a lot of pain. Because the day before Thanksgiving, it was that time of the month for me. And you guys know I suffer from fibroids and um, endometrius. So I'm in like a lot of pain when it's that time of the month like severe pain um, to where I'm not able to move. So I was very thankful for them too because they did help me. And as you guys know, tomorrow, because you'll see this on Wednesday, um, I do go in Thursday morning at 5.30 for my hysterectomy surgery, which honestly I'm, I'm happy about and then I'm not too excited about just because, you know, nobody wants to be put to sleep, um, but, you know, but, um, I know it's something I have to do, so I'm not really too worried about it. But like I said, you know, Wednesday evening, um, which was the evening before Thanksgiving, my daughters, them two, they did help me. Now, I know you guys are like, well, what about your other two kids? So my son, Wazzle, he works um, at night at Walmart. So he doesn't get off until 730 in the morning. So when he comes home, he doesn't go to sleep right away. He'll probably go to sleep like about 10 10 or 11-ish, and, you know, he has to take his medication because he has seizures, and he has anxiety really bad, so he has to take his medication, and once he takes that, he's like, you know, he's out, so I'm not going to disturb him to help me make food, like, because I just, I'm not, I really don't want him in the kitchen with me anyway, but, you know, I do have my daughter here that's 22 years old, and normally she helps, this year she didn't do a goddamn thing, when I say a goddamn thing, she didn't do a fucking thing, like not help me with anything. Didn't even ask. And now, for the past two years, she has made the baked macaroni and cheese, which I make it myself. Um, but she takes it on herself and does that, and I make like biscuits and like a couple other things. She didn't do anything but stay in her room and be lazy. So the day of Thanksgiving, um, you know, of course I'm still cooking and I'm making my homemade gravy and stuff. And she's, it's like about five o'clock. Or four thirty, like we don't eat till like six. Did she come in the kitchen? Ask me, is the gravy ready? Like I just looked at her and was like, what? No, because I was already pissed off at the laziness, the lack of help, and just the laziness and the unmotivation. And so I told you guys before, like I gave them to the end of January to to get their own place. More or less, so her because the vibes that I get from her, it's just too much negativity, and I don't really need the drama around me. And when I say negativity, like the unmotivation, like you don't have enough motivation. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to figure it out. Like 
girl, you need to get a better job. Like, you can't keep living like this. You have a kid. And then the room is just nasty and filthy. Like, there's shit all over the place, like clothes and stuff. Like, I can't deal with shit like that. Then <clears throat> you just, I don't like your cleansiness. I don't like your lack of motivation. You just, I just am tired of it. And all of that brings bad negative vibes to me. And when I say negative vibes, it's because when I see this, it brings me to a point where I just don't like it. And I know the type of person that I can be. So I hold a lot in because if I don't, I'm going to go from zero to a thousand, like within 10 seconds. And when I get like that, nobody wants to be around me. And I'm considered like the bad guy. Okay. I'm definitely considered like the bad guy. So I get that. But, um, yeah, that pissed me off. So, you know, I cooked all day Thursday and evening of the of Wednesday and no help. When it was time to eat dinner, I was just so irritated by her that I didn't even eat. I just went and sat down on the couch and watched TV and got on my laptop until I decided, well, let me go to Walmart because they had their Black Friday sale on Thursday. And they had a 40 inch TV that I wanted for a hundred dollars. So my son, everybody ate but me. And you know, she did ask me, did I want a plate made? I was like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. And um, I was just like, basically, I'm about to leave. I'm go I'm leaving. And my son, he already knew where I was going. You know, I had his discount card because he works at Walmart, like I said. And he was like, well, I'm not letting you go by yourself. I'm coming with you. So he came with me. When we got there. It was like probably like 60 people per line. It was overpacked and um, there weren't any more TVs. However, there were pallets and pallets and pallets of these TVs left. They had other stuff, other TVs, but I wanted the TV I wanted. Well, lo and behold, somebody left their car in an aisle with some paper towels and um, they had that TV that I wanted and a laptop. I don't know nothing about the laptop, but I seen the car. We asked the person that was kind of like near it, it was their car. They were like, no. So, of course, what... I'm taking your cart and you, the stuff in it, like basically, because you just left it there. I don't think you were coming back for it. So I got the TV and then I ended up buying a laptop too. Um, it was only one fifty nine for the laptop. So, you know, I bought those two items and I came home. I was home within 30 minutes. Didn't even have to stand on a checkout line because his manager seen him and she had like a traveling checkout, if you want to say, where she was walking around. She was checking out people if you had a credit card. So she seen him, we checked right out and left. So I was back home within 34 minutes, which was great. Brought the TV upstairs and I just put it to the side, it's still in this box. So, you know, of course, I'm already having like pain from my period, but it's not so bad to where I, I couldn't go to Walmart, but you know, it was getting to that point. But I wanted to make sure that everything was put away, like the food and stuff. Now, here's my thing. We have paper plates and stuff, so because I was not going to bombard my daughter, Nay, who's in charge of doing dishes. You know, she gets paid for it. I wasn't going to bombard her with a bunch of stuff. And plus, I also clean as I go, as I'm cooking. I clean up as I go along. I never like to have, like, a bunch of shit in the kitchen. So, as I'm putting the stuff away and I'm washing things as well, here she comes, my oldest daughter, basically like, you need help with anything? And I really thought it was my daughter, Nay. So when I turned around, I just was like, this is, you know, as I'm telling you guys, I did think it was my daughter, Nay. And as I turned around and looked, I, my whole facial expression changed. And I just was like, nah, I'm good. You know, like, I didn't really mean to come off like that, but it was, I, I'm just so tired of being like the person that has to do fucking everything. Okay, like literally, literally, like I'm tired of it. And so I think she's seen that in my facial expression that like, I'm done. Just please just leave me the fuck alone. And prior to that, the day before Thanksgiving, I did like have a fucking spaz out attack because I was also tired of the bullshit. So, you know, I didn't want to eat because of those reasons. And also, you know, I just was like not in the mood like the best of place that just like really kind of like fucked up my thanksgiving so i just really didn't want to be bothered so i ate later on that night it's probably like nine o'clock at night when i ate like my thanksgiving dinner you know but i am very thankful for my two daughters who helped me because if it wasn't for them like i said i probably would have been like really done like out of it so anyway you know 
during that Thanksgiving, um, the next day after Thanksgiving, my dog Sugar, um, now I don't remember if you guys remember, but last year on the 19th of November, my dog Coco, who was 12 years old, he passed away, okay? He passed away on the 19th of November, right before Thanksgiving. And it like killed me because I had him since he was a baby. So it killed me to find him in the backyard just dead. Like he had no signs of illness, no signs of aging. You know, like I said, he was almost 12, but to see him move around, you would think that he was like a puppy, except for his face had grayed out. And um, it really bothered me. But, you know, I got over it eventually. And to this day, I still talk to Coco because I have his ashes and I have like a little monument for him. And I speak to him quite frequently all the time. But I also did have my um, rescue dog, Sugar, who was a miniature poodle. And I would have had her for three years almost. Um, and um, she knows Coco. When I would say his name, she would wag her tail and stuff. And she was just so happy when I would mention his name. And then she always seemed like she would go in the backyard to where, you know, I found him at. And she would just sit there and sit there. And she would just be in that area where he was, you know, where he was found at all the time on a daily basis. So the day after Thanksgiving, this Thanksgiving, you know, Sugar had, you know, diarrhea. Now she's old too. She just turned 11. Now, mind you, she's a rescue dog. So I'm not really sure if she turned 11, but the paperwork says that she was born on the 29th of September, 2007. Now the paperwork is not like her birth certificate or anything like that. It's just like the paperwork that they write on carbon paper to say who the dog is and what's her age and what sex she is and if she was spaded or whatever. So I never knew where Sugar came from, like what type of environment, what type of home she came from to be in Halo Animal Rescue Shelter. And I never really questioned it because I loved her for who she is. And um, But I just know when I first got her that any kind of male person that came around her, she was scared. Like my son, she would back off. If I brought her with me to the drive through like at Burger King several times, and the guy at the window was taking my money, she was growling at him. My son's friends would come over. She was backing off and she was growling at them. So I didn't notice, like, you know, she did not like the male person until, like, you know, for a while. So the day after Thanksgiving, Sugar had diarrhea. And I'm thinking maybe it was from the turkey that I gave her. Like, I gave her a slice of turkey, okay? It wasn't raw. It was cooked. I gave her a slice of turkey. Not a big slice, but a small slice, you know? And, um... I said, well, maybe it's like how Coco was because when I would give Coco a piece of meat that I cooked, I noticed like the first two times he would have like the runs, you know, diarrhea. And so I realized, let me wash the meat off after I cook it if I decide to give him some so that way I could wash the seasoning off. So I felt like that probably was like sugar too now. Now, mind you, sugar never did this, never, her body never reacted like this. And um, so it was new to me to see her body react like this, like over 24 hours later. So it wasn't even the day of Thanksgiving. It was over 24 hours later after. And um, I said, well, maybe that's what the issue is. And, you know, she'll go twice and that'll be it. Like with Coco, you know, I'll give him some rice and stuff and he'll be fine. So same thing with her. But I didn't even give her the rice because she just didn't want it. She just wanted to go in her little spot. You know, she always be with me in the living room. And at night, at night, she goes to bed with my daughter, Nay, who's 16. That's her roommate, okay? So, you know, she seemed fine after that. Like, she was really fine after that. Um, but she still didn't want to eat her dog food. And I thought maybe it was that particular, not the brand, but that particular can. Because I used to give her dry and wet mixed together. But I stopped giving her the Beneful Dry because I just heard bad stories about it. Like it could kill your dog and it make them gain a lot of weight, which it did make her gain like tremendous weight super fast. And I stopped giving it to her like months ago and she gradually lost the weight. But I just really realized today, like she have lost too much weight that quick. Like seriously, she lost a lot of weight really quick. So anyway, the second day after Thanksgiving, which was on the 25th, she had came in from going outside a little doggy door and she was, um, you know, 
I gave her her bowl of fresh water and brought her put her bowl down. And she just drank this water for five minutes straight. Now, mind you, Sugar don't even like to drink water. And I know this because she'll go away to the food bowl before she gets something to drink. And I always have to tell her, you have to drink first, Sugar. You have to drink. You have to drink. It's hot outside. You have to drink. But, you know, this is me talking to her. She's not really paying me attention. I don't even think she understands what I'm saying to her because she's still eating the dog food. But I'm still saying this to her. And I'm still trying to, like, force it on her. Like, you have to drink water. <laughs> so she drank this water for, like, five minutes straight. It had took me by surprise. Like, damn, girl, you didn't drink the whole bottle of water, the whole, you know, bowl of water. And then, like, 30 minutes or five, 10 minutes later, she, she kind of threw the water up. And I said, that's... Probably because she's drank so much and so quickly. And then she went into her little room because she has her own room, which is the laundry room. And she has her own little setup in there, you know what I'm saying? So it's her room. And that's her own little setup is in there. And, you know, she sometimes she goes in there and lays down. A lot of times she's out with me. But sometimes she'll go in there because the floor is hard. It's not carpeting. And there's, a, you know, she has a little setup, but she has her own bed and stuff in there. But she does like to sleep on the actual hardwood floor the hard floors sometimes, the hard tiles, because it's cool, so, you know, then she threw up one more time later on at night, which really wasn't, I wouldn't even consider it to be throw up, it was more or less like spit, and, you know, she, she was fine, the 26th, or the 20, yeah, the 26th of November, I went and I brought Nay and Mumsy to get their hair done. And Sugar was fine before I left, which was Sunday. Sugar was fine before I left. Um, she wanted to sit outside. And I told her, come inside because mommy's leaving. And I don't want you to be out here. And I want to make sure you're okay. Because she wasn't fine, fine. But, you know, I could tell she wasn't feeling that great like her normal self. So, But I really did want her to come inside and just relax. So I picked her up and I brought her inside, you know. But she was sitting in the sun, just looking at the field. And um, I was gone for like four hours, five hours. So as soon as I came in the house, I called her name because this is what I do. I always go and check on her because like I said, she's old. And I don't expect her life expectancy to be that long because she's older. And she could be older than what she really is. Because she doesn't like to walk up the steps. And she doesn't do things that like normal younger dogs do. She never has. So when I went into the laundry room, I see Sugar. I'm calling her, Sugar, Sugar, why are you just laying there? And her bowl of water is in there. I brought it in there to her. So basically, she's laying on the water bowl, and one of her ears are in the water bowl. And I could see her breathing and her tail slightly moving. Now, normally, <clears throat> when she's communicating with me, her way of communicating with me is wagging her tail. And I could tell, I could just tell. So I picked her up and um, she was just so like limp and her head was so limp. And um, I just was like begging her, please don't die. What, what, what the heck? Please don't, don't die on me. Please don't die on me. Because when I left you, you were not like this. Please don't die on me. So I rushed her to the 24 hour emergency room for dogs, for pets. And this was like about four o'clock in the afternoon. And I was there for like hours, you know, and they basically came out and said she was dehydrated. I'm like, how is she dehydrated when she was drinking water for like days? And they was like, you know, they don't really know what's wrong with her, but they're going to put a catheter in her and they're going to hydrate her and they're going to give her some morphine because they feel like she was in pain and her blood pressure was really low and her heart was very faint. And, you know, so I was like, okay, you know, so they came out to me and, I, you know, of course, before you even get the services done to your animal, you have to pay first. So I paid them $377 at that first particular time because I wanted her to have a catheter. I wanted her to have a morphine and, you know, I wanted her to be okay. And then the doctor came in to me and she was basically telling me, like, they can do x-rays. And they could take her blood, and if that blood work doesn't come back with the certain things that they're looking for, they're going to have to do another blood work. So basically, they're going to charge me twice for two different type of blood works to, to take her blood a second time. Which to me seems like ridiculous, because when you take our blood, you take it once and you do the test. So are you scamming me or what? 
And she was saying all of this stuff to me, like she could do this done and she can get that done. We started adding up to like a lot. When I say a lot, a lot. And I'm like, you're not going to take her blood because you're not going to do all of these things to her when she's so old like this. You're like torturing her, okay? And so the, the doctor said, well, if you want, we can euthanize her. And I'm already in tears and I'm just looking at her like I snapped out of it for a second. And I just was like, you're not about to kill my dog. I'm not about to put my dog down. Well, I'm not going to do that. I've never done that to any animal that I've ever had, which I've never had an animal except for cocoa and sugar. And I could never see myself doing that. Like, I just am against that. I'm like, and, I'm, and I can't say I doubt, knock anybody, but I'm just, that's just me. And who am I to say when you, who am I to say when you live or die? Like, I'm not, I'm not God. I cannot, cannot say that, that I have no right to say that. And dogs can't speak and we're all aware of that. And like, Who's to say that the dog want to die? Like, oh, it's like, okay, well, April said we're going to go today. And this is what happened. So I said, no, we're not going to do that to her. So she said, well, you know, I can totally understand because when people have animals that are so old, it's not really in your best interest to do all these things to them because it just puts them through more stress. So basically my thing was, what the fuck you asked me about all this extra shit for then if you knew that that's not what she should be getting done. So anyway, you know what I'm saying? I told them to do what they needed to do to make her feel better. I need my dog, and I need her to feel better, but you're not going to pick and fry at her like this. So they gave her, you know, the catheter and stuff, and they came back, and they told me that her blood pressure was back to normal and that they was also able to get a nice, steady heartbeat. But she's still kind of weak because, you know, she's she's now hydrated. She's still kind of weak. And the reason why she's dehydrated or was dehydrated is because she had vomited. I said she had vomited like two and a half times. She wasn't vomiting like that because I'm always around sugar and I keep an eye on her. Like, because I'm paranoid. I don't want to find my dog like this in the state that I found Coco. So after Coco died, I got really paranoid with sugar. And I just would just keep looking at her all the time, watching her whenever she was laying still. I woke her up out of her sleep, like, you know what I'm saying? And I know that probably wasn't the thing to do because, but I just wanted to make sure that she was okay. And um, I was able to bring her home, but before I brought her home, I, I asked them, well, if you guys think it's pancreatitis, like, you know, a stomach problem, a stomach flu, then where's the pain medication at? Because she had pancreatitis before because she likes to go outside in the backyard and eat the grass. so you gave me pain medication and she was fine. So the little guy who was trying to explain and get me to pay money money for all this other stuff, you know, basically he was like, well, we can keep her overnight for you and we can keep an eye on her. We can do this. We can do that. What's $2,893 to keep my dog overnight? I'm like, no, you're not going to keep her overnight. I'm bringing her home. I want her home with me. So, you know, and I want her Where's the pain medication? So they prescribed, they gave me a prescription for her of some pain medication. It was five doses and it was $89. So I bought that for her. And, you know, when she came out, they did tell me that you're going to have to carry her because she is still weak and she's not going to be able to walk. She's not going to be able to defecate on her own. She's not going to be able to urine, urinate on her own. So you will need to help her. You may have to stand her up. Or you may have to clean her. And, like, I don't know when the dog has to go to the bathroom. Like, they don't tell me, like, I have to pee, I have to poop. So, you know, I got some puppy pads and some some wipes. And, you know, I made her comfortable. Like, they told me, make sure she stays warm and make sure she's comfortable. And I put her on this chair, like this big ottoman chair. And I put her bed down. And her bed is just like a big square pillow. And um, I put the padding under her, the big extra large puppy pad under her. And I also put like, you know, a diaper under her. So that way I wouldn't have to keep running through the puppy pads. We had diapers that didn't fit Tinky anymore. So I used those. And um, they did say she had diarrhea and it looked like there was some blood in her diarrhea. But that's normal because of the medication, the morphine. So, you know. She went to the bathroom, like seemed like every five, 15 minutes, she was going to the bathroom on herself, like number two. 
And I was, I knew she was going because she was trying to get up to get away from it. And I would just say, hey, hey, don't do that. Well, mommy got you, you know, and I would clean her little butt and I would clean up after her. And this went on for several hours. And, you know, we decorated the tree with her. She was right there watching us and we was talking to her. But she was really kind of out of it, you know, because the medication and she was breathing kind of heavy. But this is due to the medication. And this is the same thing that she had to go through before with the pancreatitis. She had the medication and it made it made the breathing a little bit more rapid and strong. So I was used to seeing this already. OK. Um, and um, like I said, I cleaned her up and. Her bowel movement smelled really, really bad, and it probably was the morphine, but it just smelled horrible. Like, I, I can't even explain it, but it was something that I've never smelled. And, um, you know, we just, we kept we kept her near us as, you know, because she was right next to where we was decorating at in the same room with us. And we decorated the tree, and we was talking to her and petting her, and I, she didn't want to drink any water on her own, so I had to kind of, like, feed her the water. I had to wet her tongue. You know, I was taking care of her because this is my dog. This is my world. I love her. She's always there with me. She sits in the living room with me while I'm making a, a wig or I'm editing videos or I'm watching TV. She's right there with her loud snoring self right there all the time with me. When I get up, she's following me behind me. When I'm exercising, she's right there next to me while I'm exercising. When I'm going for a walk, she's right there. So it was like about 12 o'clock and I finally settled down, like sat on the couch and I already had intentions like, I'm not going to sleep. I'm not going upstairs. I'm not leaving her. I'm not going to sleep on her neither because I can't go to sleep on her because if she uses the bathroom, she's going to try to get up and I don't want her to fall and I don't want her to be like, you know, in pain. So I'm going to stay up and I've already had it in my mind frame that I ain't going to sleep because I wasn't going to go to sleep. And, um, so I just sat there and I watched her, you know, I talked to her and stuff and I prayed for her and I watched my favorite show, The Walking Dead. And, um, you know, I could see her breathing and stuff. And um, she wasn't lifting her head really like that. But then I, I was watching her and I had just finished praying for her. You know, I was just basically asking God, like, please take my dog out of this pain and just please make her better. I need her. I need her. Please don't take her from me. And then at the same time, I just say, but if you can't make her better, Lord, please don't let her suffer anymore. Please don't. Because I've seen her suffering and I could see that it was bothering her and it was hurting her. And I hated to see her like this. But at the same time, I wanted her to stay with me. So it was like around 1230, 1230 ish. Um, I had looked over at her because I was already looking at her. I couldn't even watch my show because I just was so busy focused on her. I didn't want to just take my eyes off of her. I seen her lift her head up like really high and take like this huge, long breath. And I was like, hey, Trina, hey, relax, relax, relax. And I seen her take like this really huge breath. And um, she just laid her head down slowly and closed her eyes and died. And that was like the worst thing in the world for me to see. I've never seen anybody's animal die, let alone my dog. To find Coco like that was so hard. And, but to see her die was like the worst thing that I could ever imagine. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had to go tell my daughter Nay, who's her roommate. It it has been like the worst couple of days for me. Like seriously, like I have no dog, I have no companion, I have nobody to sit there and talk to me. Not like she really does, but she knows when I'm talking to her, and she does talk to me in her own ways. And I miss her. I had Christmas outfits for her that I have just bought, and things like that. You know, it sucks. Like it really, really does suck. Like. Like, I knew I wasn't going to have her forever because I bought her from a rescue. But she was my heart, man. She was my heart just like Coco was. And it just sucks because she died a year and four days after Coco died. Or a year and five days after Coco died. And um, it hurts.
It really, really does hurt. I feel alone. Okay, I feel like I'm missing something. When my daughter Nate tells me goodnight last night, it was just so weird to say goodnight to her because normally when she says goodnight, she's like, goodnight, honey. And when she says goodnight, she's got sugar carrying her like she's a baby. And sugar's saying goodnight to me too. I'm like, goodnight, girls. And there, sugar's wagging her tail. And that's her way of telling me goodnight. And Nate is telling me she loved me and that sugar keeps wagging. And I'm telling them both I love them. So last night when she went to bed, it just was so weird because she had nobody to carry upstairs with her. And it was just so weird. And then the night that Sugar passed, which was like 1230 in the morning, you know, I did have to go tell Nay. And we went downstairs. I brought her downstairs with me, but you know, I didn't wake up Mumsy. And um, we brought her to the 24-hour emergency room hospital. And because I, of course, I wasn't going to keep her in the house like that, but she was in the house with me for like an hour because I just wasn't going to let her go. You know, I was holding her and I was crying and, um, I had her cremated and that was another $200. So in total, I paid them like $609 and they did not even help my damn dog. Like they did not, they did not. And I don't even care about the money because that's my dog and I love her so much just to face the fact that she's gone is like hard for me so my week has not been that great at all like seriously i'm on the verge of spazzing out on whoever says like the slightest fucked up thing to me i probably would end up really really going off you know what i'm saying i just came back with my son from the dentist he had to go to the dentist and um let me tell y'all I'm like really sick of kids, not even sick of kids, okay, but I'm just sick of grown ass kids, not even him, because he has done his dirt and done his dumb shit, and I'm so happy that he is like past that shit and is maturing, I don't know if it has anything to do with him being on probation, probably, but he don't do the dumb shit no more, um, thank God, but it's her, it's like the oldest girl, Tati, like get the fuck it together. So this morning when I wake up, it's like 6.40, and I'm about to take my daughter to school, nay, at 6, I have to leave by 6.55 because my son, he gets out of work at 7, like 7.15, whatever. So by the time I get there and pick him up, I drop nay off first, I pick him up, and I come back home, and then Mumsy jumps in the car, and I bring her to school. So it kind of all works out. So anyway, um, as I'm waking up this morning, you know, Tati's asking me, do I do do I want her to bring Nate to school and I could relax and rest? I said, no, we have to go pick up Wurzel from work. And she was like, oh, okay. You know, she drives, but she's not the best driver and they don't really like getting in the car with her. Okay, straight up. And neither do I. So she comes back. Now, last night she says to me, well, I'm going to pick up some waters and milk from the grocery store because I buy bottled water. And it'd be like a 40 pack for like three dollars three dollars two ninety nine and a gallon of milk she needs she's like so i'm gonna just go to the store i'm gonna buy some milk and water on my way there for work because you know she works too and um anyway so as i woke up she said to me well i got i, I got some milk and water with your card i was like with my card now, I know y'all like your card, my PayPal card. I have two. I have one with my name on it, and I have one with her name on it. And I gave her one in case of an emergency because she has my grandson. And I don't want you to be somewhere or I'm somewhere out of town, and you here with name, and Mumsy and Wuzzle, and you need money for something, or you're stranded somewhere with my grandson, and you don't have the money to get back or whatever. Here, you can use this car so that's really all my money okay so but it's you can use it for emergency so she has she has called me whenever she needs to use it she does call me and and ask me I mean she'll give me the money back for it so but it hasn't always been emergency if Tiffany needs some McDonald's that's not an emergency okay um but I don't mind buying my grandson shit and this is what I'm talking about when you need a better job. Because if you had a better job, you wouldn't be fucking calling me asking you to do shit like that. Or help you with pull-ups. Or help just in general, okay? Or your tire just blew out. And I had to get a new tire, okay? So I was like, with my card, 
She's like, well, yeah, we need a bread, we need a butt, we need a milk and water. So I was like, okay. So now at this point, now I know you got money because you just came from work. So I get up and I use the bathroom and I put on my clothes so I can go get Nay to school and was it to work. And at this time, it's marinating now. Like, why the fuck you had to use my shit? Fuck, you didn't even give me no money for rent in November. And, okay, you were supposed to move out in November. That's what she kept saying. Um, But how you want to move out if you don't have any money? You, you can't get an apartment if you don't have no money. You can't save up to get an apartment. You have to have a job to get an apartment. Not save up like you got an allowance. You know what I'm saying? So anyway... I knock on her door because at this time, like I said, it was marinating. Like, hold the fuck up. I, I looked at my, my thing. Okay, yeah, it was like $4 and some change, but you can't buy that shit. You just came for work. You got money. So I was like, as soon as she opened her door, I was like, don't use my car no more. Don't use my car. She looked at me. She's like, well, what happened? I said, because what are you going and using my car to buy milk and water for? Well, it was for the house. It was for the house. So, this is what I say. So, if we needed toilet paper, I guess I got to buy it because I'm the only one in here with an ass. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all didn't give me no money for rent for November, but you can't even go buy no milk and water. Like, really? Just because it's for the house does not mean that I have to buy the fuck everything. That's not how it works. When you have a job, you're responsible. And you are responsible to help out around here. Just because we drink water don't mean that I got to buy it all the time. Or because you want cereal. I don't even fuck with eat, drink milk like that. I have cereal like once a month because I don't like the coldness. The coldness fucks with my teeth. So I don't even eat cereal like that. I only eat cereal if I ain't got nothing else like a bagel or something. I don't fuck with cold shit. It fucks with my teeth. So that shit just like really pissed me off. Like, okay, hold up. So because it's for the house, I got to pay for everything. So I was like, well, since I'm not going to need no pads, I guess I'm not going to buy any. Because it's, it's it's not for me. Or you, and like I said, you buy steak for yourself. Well, I share, it ain't for the motherfucking house. You understand what I'm saying, people? You get where I'm coming from? Like, um, just because it's needed in the house doesn't mean that you can't pick it up. You live here too. That's the shit that just pissed me the fuck off today. At that point, I was like, you know, I said what I had to say and I walked the fuck off. Like, cause I'm tired of the shit. Like, I'm not nobody's motherfucking Donald Trump. I'm not nobody fucking ATM. You cannot put a card between my ass cheeks and swipe it and money will fall out like it's at the ATM. That's not what the fuck we do here. We are responsible. Just like my son, he ate my fucking chicken in a can because I was making macaroni salad. Instead of using tuna, I used the chicken. I let him know that. And what did he do? The day um, before Thanksgiving, he came home. From work with two big ass cans of chicken for me. I didn't ask him. He replaced them though. This is what you do. He's come in several times with shit. This is what you do. She used to do that too. But now all of a sudden you think that I'm supposed to replace everything. And I'm supposed to buy everything because it's for the house. Okay. Nah bitch. It does not fucking work like that. So I had to go off like that. Like listen. I'm really seriously fed up. Fuck up. And I'm tired of it. And I'm not going to continue doing this. So what did she say? I'm going to just put your card on your desk. Thank you. Yeah. Great. That's what I said. Great. Thank you. So now if you have an emergency, you will have no means of getting back or whatever because you gave me my car back that you've had for like two years. And that's fine. I'm good with that. Okay. Because it's not for non-emergencies. You're not going to just decide that you're going to use April's money because you don't want to use your own for shit that you fucking store in your room like water bottles and drink milk and eat cereal every fucking day. This is the shit that you want. Then if you fucking thirsty, then go get you some water. If you want some milk for your cereal, go get the shit and put it in the refrigerator for everybody else. Don't think that I have to buy everything all the motherfucking time. I am not fucking Donald Trump. I am not an ATM machine. It's three adults living up in this motherfucker. You can have be responsible and buy some motherfucking water and milk. You can't stand here and keep telling me, well, it's for the house. It's for the house. So what the fuck am I? The house mom? I got to do everything that's for the house? Well, shit. You wiping your ass with that toilet paper you didn't pay for. I could be on some petty shit. Like, I'm going to need my toilet paper back. I'm going to need my toilet paper roll out your bathroom. Okay? Like, I could be on some real petty shit like that. But I'm just fed the fuck up. And I've been holding it back and holding it back. Because out here in Arizona, you will get arrested real quick. And I'm not trying to go to jail. So, I've had enough. I've literally had the fuck enough. So, I've had, like, a really fucked up week. And to make it worse, like, you know, I really did resort to my dog for comfort. And now that she's gone, it's really been fucking with me. Like, seriously been fucking with me. 
So I just want to tell you guys that it's been fucking with me. As for my surgery, I'm looking forward to it. I'm ready. Um, how I'm getting there, I'm taking a motherfucking lift. And I'm going to take a motherfucking lift back home. Yeah, my daughter kept telling me she's going to bring me and she's going to pick me up and visit me. But you know what? I don't want you to even bring me. I don't want you to come visit me. And I damn sure don't want you to pick me up. I don't like the way you drive. But on top of that, I cannot be fake and phony no more. I cannot sit there and not say nothing. I have had numerous freaking conversations with her regarding her employment and her life and et cetera, et cetera. And all she did say to me a few days ago after I had another conversation with her about her life, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to figure it out. Well, since you want to figure everything the fuck out, figure this shit the fuck out. Your shit better be out of here by the end of January. Word of line. <clears throat> I'm too old. Let me tell you something. I'm not with the shits, okay? But I will give you the shits. I'm not with it, but I can come with it. You know what I'm saying? I'm 44 years old. I'm not with the drama and all of that shit, the laziness and shit like that. I don't live in no motherfucking mansion, but the shit that I do have, trust and best believe that I like for it to stay nice because I worked hard for that. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that feels that way, but I'm not with the drama. And all of this shit, like how she carries on like her life and non-motivated and non-cleansing, that's enough for me. It, it brings me bad vibes and it brings me into a negative space okay and I cannot have that around me because it brings me to a point where my blood is boiling and I'm all I can do to think of is fucking wrap my two hands around your motherfucking throat and just strangle your ass so I don't want to go to jail and I don't want you to go to the hospital so the best thing for you to do is to scoot on out and go so my my week has been fucked up like literally fucked up but other than that, you know what I'm saying, I will get through this and I will be okay. You know, I know that I will be okay eventually. I'm just trying to weed out the negative shit around me because I cannot have it. I don't give a fuck who you are, if you're my kid, my parents. If you're negative and you have negative vibes about you and you bring nothing but negativity and you don't want to do anything with yourself, that shit is negative to me. And with that being said, can I have it around me? So. Yes, in a little while, I'm about to go get lit. Like, when I say go get lit, I mean, like, bitch, I'm about to get high. I'm smoke me a blunt, and I'm going to get high after I do my wig video. Okay, so that's the reason why I have this hat on, because I did have to take my son to a dental appointment. And I wasn't going to glue a wig on or adhere a wig, rather, um, like with the hairspray, because I was going to have to take it off. So I just threw on a half wig, and I didn't even wear any hair out. So, yes, that's the wig. This is a nice one, though. I did a video on this one, actually, and it's really, really pretty. So, yeah, but it's not really, really pretty the way I have it situated right now, but I don't really care about all that. So, yes. So that's the reason for my $1 Star Wars hat that I got on clearance some time ago at Walmart. Because I don't really wear hats, but I'm starting to like them. I'm really starting to like them. So, you guys, on that note, we're going to get into this Real Talk video. If you have a real talk that you want to talk about, you can go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. My email is in the description box, so you can definitely check it there. Please put in the subject line of the of your email, real talk, so that I know it's a real talk. If you want to change the names to the people that you are talking about or your own self, because you don't want nobody to know you're talking about them, then go ahead and let me know you changed the names. If you don't tell me that, then 99.9.9.9% of the time, I will definitely change it for you. Okay, baby daddies. But, yes. We're going to get into this. And, honestly, I really wasn't going to do this video today because I just, like I said, I'm really not into it. Like, I'm really not having a good week. But I think, like, for me, this is the best venue, meaning, like, this is better for me than an outlet. This, You guys are like an outlet to me because even though you guys are not here literally phys physically, you understand what I'm saying, and I can read your comments, and I can talk to you guys. So it does make me feel a whole lot better than just sitting and stewing in my own freaking attitude and juices. So, um, yeah, I am ready for Thursday. I got a whole bunch. I know y'all like, bitch, what? I'm ready for Thursday surgery. Um, I got a whole bunch of bundles and closures on deck. I know y'all like, what? You going to serve? Yes, bitches, because if I have to sit around for like two weeks and not do shit, like my doctor said, I can't do nothing. I can't move because, you know, I have bad circulation in my legs. So I do go get vein mapping. I have like horrible veins in my legs to where they hurt. So I'm not going to be able to like walk like I need to. Um, 
and I might have to wear a compression thing just to make sure that my blood is um, circulating properly after the surgery. So I'm not going to be able to do anything for two weeks. And if I have to wear like a circle, a, a compression for my legs and such, um, I may have to use a walker or a cane or more or less like a walker, basically a walker, you know, one, two, three. So I ain't trying to go nowhere like that for two weeks. You know what I'm saying? So I am prepared. I got mad shit to do, like sit on the couch shit to do, like make wigs. I can do that and I can edit videos. So I took out my bundles on deck and man bundles and closures. Okay. So let's get into this real talk. Okay, so you ever drink out of a straw after you crush the shit? Like, seriously? Okay, so yeah, I'm drinking this again. Starbucks Frappuccino. This is like a small ass bottle. Let me tell you why. I went to the smoke shop next to Starbucks. Now, smoke shop, they just sell, I don't, I think that's what it's called. They sell, it's a store. They sell cigarettes, they sell blunts, they sell juice, they candy chips, they sell um, bongs and shit like that. They sell everything in there, not everything. They, you can't get no wig. But, um, so I bought that from there because I had to go get a blunt. And I know y'all probably like, bitch, why you ain't go next door to Starbucks? Let me tell y'all why real quick so we can get this real talk. So, a few days ago, me and my son went to Starbucks. This was like right before Thanksgiving. I think it was last Tuesday. And um, we was coming back for the dentist for him because, you know, he's, he got to go to the dentist. And I make his appointments like every week. Get your fillings and get your root canal because I'm not about to let you suffer like I did. So I put him back to back so that we can get it all done. So I was like, let's go to Starbucks because they made some really good iced coffee for me the other day. So, you know, I don't know the Starbucks lingo at the fuck all. But I tell you what, though. The girl, when she made my iced coffee, which is the caramel one, she was asking me all these fucking questions. I was like, what? I just know that at Dunkin' Donuts, this is how they do it for me. So I let her know how I like it. And I don't like a lot of sugar. I don't even use sugar. I use Splenda. <clears throat> so I said, well, what, if, what, what happens when I want to come back and get another one? So she, she said, take your phone out and take a picture of this. She put it on my cup. So that way I know what to ask for. I could just show them. So, okay, I go in there and I show her the freaking, you know, Starbucks thing. Let me even show you guys. I so I show the girl the Starbucks thing on my phone. It says everything that I had in my last one, okay? So with that being said, I'm like, okay, this going to be really, really good, right? Like at least I thought it was supposed to be really, really good, you know? I don't know. So I give the girl the phone and she looks at it, okay? Now, here you go. This is it right here. And I'm a, hopefully I could zoom in for you guys. Hopefully you can see that. Um, maybe you can't, whatever. You can probably see the cracks in my phone, but okay. So this is it right here. Whatever it says, you know, I'm sorry that the screen is like, okay. So that's it right there. That's everything. It tells you everything that I want on in that cup of, you know, iced coffee. It tells you everything. So the girl, when she had, she had made mine and then she made my son's, he, he got something else. And when she gave it to me, it was so light. It was lighter than me. Like the fucking thing was so light skinned. That fucking, that fucking iced coffee was light skinned. Okay. The motherfucking iced coffee was light skinned. All right. The day, the couple days before that, it was not, it was brown skinned. Okay. And that's how the fuck I wanted to see it again. Brown skin. And so I said, um, this doesn't look like how it used. I said, ma'am, I'm sorry, but this doesn't look like how it did the other day. It was darker than this, so it's a lot of cream in here. And I could tell it had a lot of cream in it because um, I've been going to Dunkin' Donuts, and I know when it has too much cream. So I tasted it, and it just tasted horrible. Like, it didn't even taste sweet. It just tasted like, it just tasted really nasty. And now, mind you, I only had gotten $10 back out of a 20 for two drinks, which means that shit was like $5. Okay, I gave you a 20, you gave me $10 back. No change, just $10 bill. So I said, can you just like, please redo it? So when she looked, she didn't even look at me. She just basically was like, looked another direction. Like she didn't want to give me eye contact and took it and, and just made another one. And so when she gave me the second one back, well, here you go. I hope this is good. 
but didn't even want to look at me. So I tasted it. It tasted like the first one. And a part of me was going to say, you know what, April, just go and doctor it the fuck up. But why the fuck should I have to do that shit? Like, I'm not about to stay here and do this because I don't think there was no hope for it. So then I went up to her. I said, you know what? Because I was about to ask her to do it for a, a second, a third time, make me a third one now. I said, you know what? It's not really that great. It's not good at all. And I just seen the garbage and I was like, so here you go. And I just tossed it in the garbage and I walked the fuck out. Like I should have got my money back, but knowing me, I would have spazzed the fuck off. And then that bitch would have said something smart because she seemed like she had an attitude. She wanted to be to work that day. And then I might have fucking threw her somewhere and fucking Starbucks her ass. Okay. So I just to alleviate that bullshit, I just got this because my patience is really not that good today. And like I said, the slightest fucked up thing you say to me, bitch, I might have you fucking twisted somewhere. So it's best that I just stay the fuck away from the bullshit. So there you go. So now let's get into this real talk because I have wasted enough of you guys' time on my own shit. And I'm, you know, I'm thankful for you guys to listen. For real. I am. Okay. So let's do this. Okay. Hey, April. Hey, girl. I absolutely love all your videos. I have been following you for almost three years now, and you get me through all my workday. So, bitch, where were you all the other years? Because I've been on here for 11 fucking years. I mean, this ain't my first channel, but girl, you should have been following me. I'm just fucking with you. Okay. Um, but I do thank you for following me. Thank you so much. As you can see by this email, you can see my real name, but for this, you can call me Victory. By the way, I apologize that this is long. Y'all need to stop apologizing to me for it being long. That's okay. I am 30 years old and will be 31 December 2nd. So happy early birthday, girl. Happy birthday, girl. Wish I was turning 31 and not 45. Miss April, I have two gorgeous sons from my baby daddy. The same man. Okay. To be honest, I love my three-year-old, but I don't know what I was thinking. Meaning she didn't know what she was thinking to have another baby. We will call my kid's father, Paul. I met Paul when I was 19 years old and I fell head over heels for him. And out, I fell head over heels from him, for him. And out of this relationship came my 11-year-old son. During this relationship, he began to beat me every day. He would cheat on me with multiple women and bring these women to my home. It got so bad one time that I had to fight one of these girls that was in my house. He had in my house. Me being dumb, he never paid a bill or helped with my first son. And the same is now with our three-year-old. We are not together. But Miss April, I can't seem to get rid of this man. I have put him on child support and every time they find him, he quits his damn job. He calls me and calls me and begs for me back and I'm like, no. My dilemma is this. He has a new daughter with this 19-year-old chick. And somehow she has gotten my phone number and she has asked me, could she come to my house because she needs refuge away from Paul? What do I tell her? Yes. And possibly we'll have, what do I tell her? And yes, possibly we'll have to deal with Paul coming over to my home to look for her or should I leave her to figure it out for herself? I feel for her because I know what type of man he is. Muffin, please help. Enclosed are pics of me and my boys. And they are so cute, okay? They are cute. I love kids. Like, they so cute. But then sometimes when they grow up, they just be so, so just like, ah. But he is so cute. A little three-year-old got the biggest freaking smile. Oh, my God. So cute. And they are both so cute. And they look just alike. Cute. They, they do look just alike. So, okay. Victory. So she is about to be 31 on December 2nd. So y'all make sure to tell her happy birthday, girl. But here's the thing. She has an 11-year-old and a 3-year-old with the same man. They've been together since she was 19. So she's 30 years old now. Y'all do the motherfucking math, okay? So she has gotten rid of him because, for one, he beat her on an everyday basis. He cheated on her. He got these bitches coming to her house, bringing bitches to her house, okay? She's had to fight one of them. She, he didn't even bring them to the house. He brought them inside the motherfucking house, okay? And he ain't never paid a bill or taken care of any one of her kids. 
and he's still begging for her to come back. First of all, sweetheart, this is where you fucked up at. Now, I understand this is probably in the past because y'all ain't together no more. But if a nigga bring a bitch to your home that he's fucking, you best believe he has no respect for you whatsoever, okay? Nor does he have respect for the bitch that he brought there. So that means in return that he ain't got no respect for no fucking woman, let alone that he got respect for his fucking mama, okay? But I'll be damned if you about to bring some bitch to my motherfucking house and beat me on an everyday basis, nigga. You better hope you wake the fuck up, okay? You best to hope for that. I would have been long gone a long time ago. But she she left finally. Oh, my wig is itching. She finally left, which is a good thing for her. And um, now he still ain't helping out. She got a three-year-old with him. Not, not Who knows when they broke the fuck up because she got a three-year-old with him. So that means that they were doing something. Whether or not they were together, she still was fucking him. Either way, I wouldn't have been fucking him, especially if he done beat me every day and he done fucking had bitches over my house multiple times, cheated on me multiple times, and ain't pay for shit. Nigga, you, you lucky you is still alive. You lucky you ain't part of the walking dead, walking, 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 barely walking, okay? So now he got this new baby. He got a new little girl, a new little daughter with a 19-year-old. And the 19-year-old girl done called Victory. She done got Victory's phone number. We gonna call the 19-year-old girl Bobo, okay? No, we don't wanna call her Bobo. Yeah, nah, we're we about to call her Bobo. We're about to call her Bobo. And I don't really even want to call her Bobo because that was my husband's um dog. That was his name. And he was sweet. Of course, he passed away too. We're going to call her. We, we just going to call her. um. We're going to call her Sally. We're going to call her Sally because Sally seemed like a name for some dummy. Okay, so the 19-year-old girl's name is Sally and Paul is the baby daddy. Okay, and Victory is the lady who done emailed me. So Sally, the 19-year-old, then got a hold and got a hold of Victory's phone number. And now, mind you, Sally got a baby with Paul, who is Victory's baby father, okay? So she got a baby with him, too. I don't know how old she is, but she got a baby with him, too. So now the 19-year-old girl is calling Victory's phone, asking for help, asking for refuge so she can get the fuck away from Paul. And Victory don't know what to do. She said, if I tell her yes, he going to be over here. Let me tell you something. Come looking for her. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. But she feel bad for her because she know how it is. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. You need to let that 19-year-old girl figure that shit out on, fuck, on her own. That is not your business nor your place to take that bitch the fuck in. Okay? I understand you feel bad for her. But let me tell you something. That is not your place. Sweetheart, do not take in no fucking stranger refuge in your house. They got shelters for that shit. Like on some real shit, they got shelters, domestic violence shelters, women and children, family services can help her the fuck out and she can find somewhere to find refuge from. But your house is not the refugee camp, okay? My home is not the motherfucking refugee camp, straight up like that. Like, I'm sorry, but I feel bad for people that put them in some... I feel bad for women that are in situations or predicaments like this too. However... We can't all be saver hoes. You can't save her. And the only person that can save her is herself. Not only that, but first of all, you don't even know this bitch. You don't know if this is a setup. You don't know this. He could be putting her up to set you up and come in your house and rob you or just like spy on you or just do just anything. You know what I'm saying? Just do any fucking thing. She could be lying to you and despise you because she probably knows that He's trying to still get with you and she might try to be like that single white female type shit movie where she try to do something to you or your kids. You never know what a person's real intentions are, especially some fucking stranger and a 19 year old. I'm not saying all 19 year olds are like this, but I'm sorry. I don't really trust young people that much, like in their early 20s and teens and stuff like because I've seen them in action because all they do is they sit around and they watch shit on the social media. Or they can see somebody in the street getting beat the fuck up or hurt. And what do they do? They don't run up to the person and try to get them help or help them. They take their motherfucking phone out and start video recording it. Not to record it to show it to the police or to get help, but to put it on social media to get fucking clout. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not really like a big fan of 19-year-olds and shit like that. Because a lot of them that I've seen are just not really worth me like being trustworthy of. But especially when it's somebody you don't know. Like, I'm sorry, but... I'm all for helping people, and y'all know this. Like, I will tell you in a heartbeat, I'm, I'll help you. i help those who want to help themselves. I'll help you. I'll give you information. Sweetheart, 
you can get her information. That's what the fuck you can do. You can get her some information. Look up the YWCA in your area because they do domestic violence for women. And look up domestic violence women shelters and she can get herself into a shelter. But your home is not a refugee camp. You know what I'm saying? It's not a safe haven. Okay? It's none of that. This is not a motherfucking shield. We are not a shelter. I got my own kids in my own life. You could sit her down and she could be really trustworthy. She could, she can be just that. That 19 year old girl, I could be wrong about her. She can be trustworthy. Maybe she is, maybe she's not. I don't know. And neither do you, Victory. But she may be, say she was a person that was really honest and had no ill intentions of fucking up your shit or fucking up your life by coming in. She could be just genuinely a good person. However, how are we to fucking know that? Okay. And if you was to have her there, you can talk to her and tell her what she should do until you're blue in the face. That don't necessarily mean that that bitch is going to go ahead and do it. She's going to turn around and probably go back to Paul. I don't know if she is or not, but I'm going to tell you what. This is a situation where you need to see your way the fuck out. This is an A and B conversation. Victory, see your way the fuck out of it. Don't conversate with that girl. Keep your number. Block her from calling you. I understand she got a kid with your baby father and that's their sibling and shit. But you know what? Some things are just left alone, especially when you come into ties with her on bad terms. And when I say bad terms, like this bitch didn't look you up because I want my kid, my daughter to get to know their brothers. I'm a friendly person. Now, this bitch looked you up because she and Dyer's needs of help. I don't know you from a hole in the wall or a can of paint. Bitch, I don't know you from anything sitting under a rock right about now. And I don't really want to get to know you on these type of terms, like bringing you and inviting you into my home. Not also that, but you have two kids there, a three-year-old and 11-year-old. You don't bring no stranger into your home. I don't care if they male or female. Do not bring no strange ass motherfucking people around your kids, like for real, because you never know what they do. Like, seriously, I could come off as a really nice, genuine person. Like, hey, guys, it's me, April. I hope you guys are having, like, a really great day. I've got my Starbucks Frappuccino here. And, yeah, we're going to drink this on camera. And all I really like to do is make crafts and wigs and ride ponies and go horseback riding and play a little golf. And that's just my life. Knowing damn well, bitch, I don't do any of those things but make some motherfucking wigs. And I only got this shit because I know I was going to fly that bitch head in Starbucks. And um, riding ponies, the only shit that I'm riding is my motherfucking husband's dick, okay? And as far as making crafts, um, if you're talking about rolling up a blunt, making a blunt, then okay, I'm good. I'm your girl. So, you know what I'm saying? I could come off as real fucking good and real nice and candid. But in reality... I'm a fucking crazy bitch. Like, seriously. Your shit come up the fuck missing. She listening on your calls. Say her and Paul do get it back together and they going back together and they get back together. Say you invited the bitch to come stay with you. Say you said, I'm going to be the refugee camp. I'm going to be the refugee camp for this bitch and her daughter. Okay. I'm going to be the refugee camp for this bitch and her daughter. And, you know, say she, she is a humble person. Say she is like, you know, all right. Okay. And y'all get to talking and stuff and you telling her about how, you know, you need to leave Paul. He's no good. He's a beater. He's a woman beater. He's a manipulator. He's a cheater. He's a dog. He's a bum. He's a deadbeat dad. He ain't shit. He got a little dick. I like, you know, saying shit like that. I don't know if he did not, but I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, you know, when we get to talking as women and we mad at the same fucking person, especially if it's a man, we gonna dog his ass the fuck out. Now, say y'all doing all of this, and she's like, yeah, girl, he can't fuck. This might not even be his daughter. Blah, blah, blah. I'm tired of him. He always beating on me. And blah, blah, blah. And he said this stuff about you, but I know you was a nice person because look at you got me in my So, okay, so say y'all just, you know, back and forth, story swapping and bashing him. Okay? And then she feel like, you know what? Me and Paul could work it out because he's texting her and he's apologizing. Because, you know... You go back if a nigga is apologizing and trying to be sincere, you'll be vulnerable. Like, I'm okay. You know, so she goes back. And then when she goes back to Paul, all she's doing is sitting around, fucking Sally sitting around talking about, yeah, victory. That bitch is dirty. She's a bum. She be fucking all these different dudes. They was coming in and out to her house. She don't even take care of your kids. She barely feed them. She be feeding them oodles and noodles every day and hot dogs. And then have all these different men around um, around your kids and shit, sucking their dick and stuff for money and stuff like that. And, like, she was talking shit about you, how you ain't shit. You never took care of the kids. You always be eating her and cheating on her shit, baby, and all this 
You see what I'm saying? Like this shit then carried off from one thing to another. This is how bitches do it. This is how it do it go. Okay, so first of all, I was not about to swap no war stories with this bitch. Second of all, I'm not about to invite this fucking refugee homeless ass bitch into my house. Bitch, go home to your mama. Where's her mother at? Tell her to take her ass to her mother. Block that bitch from calling you. The next time you conversate with her, let her know, sweetheart. I'm sorry, but I'm not trying to get in the middle of involved in anybody else's, you know, relationship or anything like that. I'm over here and I'm on my business and I'm going to continue. I wish you nothing but the best. You can call this number, the YWCA. They do have shelters for women and children for domestic violence. Or what about your family? Do you have any family members you can go stay with? But I do apologize. I cannot invite you into my home as we are not familiar with one another. That's it. Bottom line. And the bitch don't like you. After that, the bitch don't motherfucking like you. Who gives a fuck? You don't even know the bitch. If she don't ever talk to you again, who gives a fuck? You don't even know the bitch. If she fucking dish you and text you back and talk to you and call you all kind of bitches and shit, who gives a fuck? Because you don't even know the bitch. Right? That's how the fuck I feel about it. So, no. Tell the bitch that she needs to go ahead somewhere. You don't need to be helping everybody out. We're not safe for hoes. I understand we all we want to help people, but I'm sorry, sweethearts. We don't have to, and we can't help every fucking body. That's just, that's just obvious. We cannot help every fucking body. And I would not be helping nobody that is part of my ex-baby daddy's fucking drama club. Stay that shit over there, bitch, and I'm going to stay the fuck over here. I don't know you, and I don't want to get to know you. And how dare she ask you, can she stay with you? I'm sorry, but if it were me, I would never ask the ex-baby mother, ex-girlfriend, can I stay with you because he's beating on me. How embarrassing is that? And how fucking lame is that? Bitch, get on your own two feet and get, get it together. Tell that bitch to get the fuck together. So let Victory know what you would do. Me personally, Victory, I'm telling you this. Do not let that bitch in your house. Don't welcome her into your home. Like, seriously, you got two beautiful children and stuff, and you beautiful as well. Do not invite that fucking bitch into your house because she's really, really, really not worth your time and effort. Or she's just definitely not worth you, like, getting into any type of altercations or beef over with him. Like, so, me personally, mm mm-mm. No, no, no. I just wouldn't. I just, I just wouldn't. No, no, no. Not even bother. So we're going to move on to the next one. Okay. Hi, April. I haven't been a subscriber to your channel long, but I love to watch your videos. I really appreciate your realness and honesty. This year has been a year of change. I gave birth to my daughter in January, currently 10 months ago in January. So my focus has been to make myself a better person so I can teach her to be a good person. But to get to the point of my letter, I have a 37-year-old half-brother, David. Name is changed. We have different fathers and I am 32. We weren't raised together because my father was in the military and my mom gave David the option to live with us or stay in Ohio with my grandmother. He chose to stay in Ohio and has been in and out of trouble ever since. Me and David have never really had much of a relationship. In the past, I've tried several times to build one, but has never been a success. A few years ago, I had given him over $400 to help him get his driver's license back. But to this day, no one knows where the money went. My mother is always giving him things because he's always claims he, he's going to get his shit together. But he never does. David is too focused on partying, drugs, alcohol, and women. Back in April, I sent, back in April, I sent him a picture book of my daughter that I made for him. Almost two months later, he sends me a message through Facebook telling me, thanks, sorry it took me so long to contact you, but I was in Facebook jail. Facebook jail. I felt that was bullshit excuse because my grandmother had a telephone he could have called me from. When I expressed to him how I felt, he went completely off on me saying stuff like, you got me fucked up, you need to focus on being a mother and grow up. How are you mad over some damn pictures and a lot of other hurtful shit? I clearly explained to David that I wasn't mad over the pictures. I was mad over the fact that he used Facebook as an excuse to not contact me, but he still didn't get it. After all that stuff I've done for him in the past, it felt like a slap in the face for how he came at me. I have not spoken to him since because, like I said earlier in the email, I am trying to change and I don't want that type of negativity in my life around my daughter. This will be the first time in five years that I will go back to Ohio for Christmas. So there's a chance that I will see David. Of course, I have forgiven him so I can move on, but I honestly don't want anything to do with my brother at this point. My mom says I should forget the whole situation, but I don't forget disrespect. Am I wrong for not wanting a relationship with David? My whole life, I just never felt that sibling connection. I know that you are busy, so I appreciate any insight you have to give whenever you have time. Thank you and God bless. 
So what did she change her name to? Her brother's name is David. I don't even think she changed her name. Okay, so we're just going to call her, we're going to call her Christy. We're going to call her Christy because one of my good friends in Cali is Christy. Christy love. I love you, Christy. Love you so much. I know you're going to call me or text me, but I love you. That's my girl. We've been friends since I've been on YouTube, so I love her for real. Like, that's my girl. So, Christy and her brother David are like, at war not even at war but you know saying like he on some other shit she on some other shit she don't want no negativity around her because she just you know she got a baby she want to better herself she want to be a better person so she can teach her daughter things and that's to be expected when you have kids you mature when you get older you mature regardless if you have kids you mature okay and she sent her her brother a photo album and he didn't reply back to her. He didn't say thank you. He didn't reach out to her for two months later, talking about he in Facebook jail. And that was his excuse. And then she said, you know, grandma has a phone. You could, that's not an excuse. So then he get mad and she told her, you got me fucked up, cussed her out, said all kind of mean things. Now she had to go back to Ohio for Christmas. And, you know, she's forgiving him because she wants to move on. But, you know, she don't really want to be bothered with him. Her mom is telling her basically just forget about the whole thing and just move past it. But here's the thing. She don't want no negativity in her life. And should she kind of like try to rebuild a relationship with her brother? Let me tell you something. Sometimes you just can't. You just got to walk away from even your own family members. I told y'all I have two brothers, okay? I only fucks with one of them, which is my brother, Corey, the one that looks just like me. My other brother, Jonathan, who is probably like 11 years younger than me, I don't fucks with him. He got too many issues. He, he claims that he's a psychic. I told you guys before, he claims he's psychic, he claims he's possessed, and he's gay as well. And um, what else was it? There was something else that my friend told me, my friend Dave told me to say about him, but I can't remember. But, and he's bipolar. So the reason why I don't speak to him is not because he's gay, because I could care less. Like, if you're gay and you're my brother, we probably would really get along, like, really, really good. You know what I'm saying? Because we have things in common we both like men we both like dick okay but anyway um he's not even like that because his his thing is this he's disrespectful to my dad he's always talking shit about him he talks shit about him talking about my dad is the one that made him gay no he's not my dad was a football coach he took you and 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 coached you in football and basketball and did all kind of um, masculine things with you and my brother so there's no way that he made you gay. You just gay because that's what the fuck you want to be. And there's nothing wrong with that. But just don't blame it on nobody else. And on top of that, like I said, he's disrespectful to my dad. He's a little bit weird off. So, you know, when he says things to me on the phone, basically about, oh, well, ah, uh, uh, speak daddy up. Uh, like, you're not about to talk about my dad like that. So, you know, when he had this conversation with me about he was... This was all in one phone conversation that he's psychic and, you know, he is possessed. He was possessed and shit. He didn't tell me he was gay. But I already knew that. You know what I'm saying? I've been through that shit. He just don't know I know. But, you know, he had told me already that he was gay before then. Because he didn't just tell me. I asked him. You like that? You know what I'm saying? So when he basically was telling me, this, you know, about his psychic powers, okay, ooh, and his possessedness, okay, and shit like that, I was, you know, also being told how he, he felt like slapping the shit out of my father and all this shit. So, like, I could sit there and listen to you. I can sit there and listen to you say that you got psychic powers. And I could sit there and listen to you tell me that you possessed. I'm probably going to think you're a little bit off cuckoo, but okay, whatever. I'm going to sit there and listen to you. Maybe I can walk you through some shit. Maybe you could read my palm and let me know what the lotto number is going to be tomorrow so I can, I can win me some money or something like that. But then when you get into the spiel of how you want to smack the shit out of my father and fuck him and all this shit, then you lost me. I done zoned into another world, another realm, okay? We done, we done crossed over, okay? Now I'm possessed. A bitch is now I'm possessed. Because you're not about to sit on this phone and disrespect our father. And the way you talking, nigga, he ain't even your father no more. Fuck you. You out the family. He's my father. I, done, I disowned you and banned you the fuck out of the Furman family. So when you do some shit like this, then I'm, I'm, I'm not in the same space as talking about being psychic and possessed. Now, I don't give a fuck about your situation. We're going to talk about what the fuck did you just say about my father? So basically, he don't like me because I'm very blunt and I have no filter. And everybody says this about me, not just my kids, but a lot of people say I have no filter and I'm blunt. 
And I'm sorry I'm that way, but that's just me. So basically, I just said to him, I said, well, you know what? You, you have no business talking about him like this. Who the fuck you think you talking to like this about my father? You crazy, disrespecting, disrespectful ass. And I said, you know something? You need to get your shit together because you either going to be gay, possessed, or a fucking psychic. Pick one. Choose one because you can't be all three because it's hard enough being gay in this world. It's damn sure hard being a psychic and possessed. You need to choose one of them things that you want to be and just stick with it because I'm not even trying to hear you. Well, because I said that about he had to choose one of the three, well, his little fairy ass hung up on me, okay? He hung the fuck up on me. And when I say fairy, trust me, I am not bashing gays because trust me and believe me, I love them, okay? I love gays. I love them. I think that their spirit is gay. When I say gay, meaning happy. And they are normally happy people and very joyous to be around. Except for fucking Jonathan's ass. My my brother's name is Jonathan because my dad's name is John. So And my husband's name is John, okay? But you know what I'm saying? So, like, that's why he don't speak to me. So I don't really try to mend anything with him because he just don't know what he want to do with life. He's just all over the place. He's He doesn't keep a job. He's Something is wrong with him, okay? He's Something is definitely wrong with him. So like I'm I'm not saying that I hate him because I don't I don't hate him. I love him because he's my brother, but I don't really care for him. You know what I'm saying? We have different mothers. And um I don't really see myself no time in the future mending things with him unless he reaches out to me. And I doubt that he's gonna do that because I've been known to be told as I am the bully of the siblings. My mom says that about me because it's me and my sister with my mom. And she says that I'm a bully and I'm very aggressive. And whenever I come around, I take over shit. You damn right. I'm not about to let you walk over my mother, me and my sister. I'm not about to let my mom do shit like you do it. You live there with mommy. You take care of her. and You do this shit. So, okay, I am a bully. When I feel like my mother got too much shit in her house and my sister's just allowing it and not washing the dishes and mopping the floor, you damn right I'm going to be the bully. And as far as my dad's concerned, I am the bully too because I don't never learn to stop being so mean. I'm not mean. I'm just non-filtered. And I'm not about to let you talk about my dad like that. So, and, you know, I am known to be the bully. So, me per se, listen, all of this social media bullshit, was an excuse for your brother before social media was invented what the fuck was there there was letters in the mail and it was a phone and if your grandmother has a phone and i'm pretty sure she has a house phone okay because she's an older lady he could have called you with no problem if she had not a house phone and a cell phone he could have called you with with no problem not even to just say thank you but me personally if that was my sister and she just sent me a book with my my my, my niece in it you know what i'm saying i'm gonna call her I know the pictures look like they're okay, but I want to call her and inquire, how's my niece doing? How are you doing? You know, I just got the book or whatever. People stay using social media as a fucking excuse to to get over, to get by. And it's not a fucking excuse. It's your dumb, lame ass just don't want to do the shit. Stop being like so fucking lazy and just like, just stop already with the social media. And for him to go off on her like that, like, all right, you know what? Sometimes some people's characters are not even worth, you know what I'm saying, going into. Like, don't get yourself all worked up over anything your brother says. Because trust me when I tell you, don't let anybody see you sweat. Never let somebody see you sweat because they're not worth it. Like, seriously, I don't give a fuck who they are to you. If they doing some shit to you and they aggravating you, don't let the bitches see you sweat. Brother, mother, sister, father, excuse me, lover. Don't let them see you sweat. That's when they get the best of you when you come out of character. And let me tell you something. It's one thing to forgive, but you definitely don't have to forget, okay? And with that being said, like, okay, when you go home to Ohio and you see David, be cordial. Be respectful. Don't be petty. Don't be grimy. Don't be on no petty shit. Be respectable because, for one, you are somewhere at someone else's home, okay? For two, you don't want to stoop down to his level. Never stoop down to anybody else's level. If the bitch is higher than you, step over that bitch, okay? Step over that motherfucker. If you want to, step on the bitch, okay? But never stoop to his level. Never stoop to somebody else's level who has pissed you the fuck off or has belittled you in some type of way to where it's got you in your feelings. Never let them see you the fuck sweat. So when you go back to Ohio, make the best of it. Show your daughter off. If you see him, be cordial. How you doing? 
you know, it's good, it's great seeing you. Sometimes that shit right there will eat a person alive when you just really cordial to them, but but you're 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 not you're you're cordial, you're not affectionate, you're not really showing them that family love. Like, hey, I love you. Oh, you cute. Oh my God, you got so big. I love your hair. Oh my God. You know what I'm saying? When you don't do that and you're just like, hey, how you doing? It's so good to see you, especially to your old brother. You're not, not giving a hug, but hey, David, wow, you look great. It's really good seeing you. You know what I'm saying? This is Uncle David. You know, well, you know, I'm going to go eat some dinner, you know. That she would kill me if that was my sister and I haven't seen her in years. And then for her to just be like, kind of like blank and dry like that, that would definitely bother me. But you have to do that shit with some willpower. So when I say you got to do with willpower, meaning this, like I said earlier, I know the type of person I am. I just spaz the fuck off. I go from zero to a thousand within seconds. This is how you gotta, but I don't because I got willpower. And I know that if I do something or say something, it's gonna, something's gonna pop off and I might be in cuffs. And I really don't wanna go back to jail again. Like, I've been to jail enough times to where I ain't really trying to go there. You know what I'm saying? And my record is with assaults. Assaults, okay? Assaults. I really don't want to be seen in Arizona as the lady from New York who be assaulting people. So I try to be cool about this shit, but I've had my situations enough times out here. Now, have the willpower. You have to have the willpower, meaning you got to just be cool with the shit. Be chill. Don't let him get the best of you. That's what I'm saying. Be on some humble shit. It's good seeing you. That's the willpower. You being grown. You being a lady. You not letting this nigga fucking fuck with you. Fuck with you. Don't let them fuck with your vibe. Ever let them fuck your vibe ever let them fuck up your vibe don't ever let them fuck up your vibe i'm telling you once you let them fuck up your vibe they will continuously try to fuck up your vibe okay so i say this meaning don't let them fuck up your vibe now as for rekindling and rebuilding honey if that's not what you have in your heart and that's not how you feel. Don't force yourself to do anything. As long as you're cordial and you're respectable to those around you, you don't owe anybody nothing. Like, seriously. Y'all think that's because y'all blood relatives that it's supposed to be all cookies and cream and shit? Nah, it ain't really supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be this way or one way or another. You ain't got to be the best of friends. Listen, I have cousins that I could, dare, could care less for, okay? I, for real, I could care less for. But I'm cordial to them. I'm not going to be disrespectful. But if you say some dumb shit to me, I might just snap your motherfucking head off. But on some real shit, just be cordial. You don't have to be his best friend. Hi, how you doing? It's great seeing you. You're looking good. You know what I'm saying? I love you. That's it. Just leave it like that. Nobody don't want no drama and negativity around them. I know I don't. I can't stand to be around anybody that got too much fucking going on and all this drama and bullshit. It's not for me. So I stay the fuck away from it, even from family members. I keep the fuck away from it. And no, you know what I'm saying? I really don't think, Christy, that you have to rebuild that. If that's not what you want to do, then don't go on my word if I say, yes, you do. What I'm telling you to do is have that willpower and be cordial to anybody at that fucking Christmas dinner or his Christmas gathering that you see and you don't fucking like, be cordial to them and just be ladylike and hold your own. That's it. That's all the fuck you got to do. So on that note, you guys, I'm going to go. I got like an hour, almost like 50 minutes to get Mumsy from school and I'm about to do some wig videos. I'm so excited because look, I got some hair from... um. Sam's Beauty. Well, I always do. I got some wigs. This is a new one. Sensational's textured, Sensational's textured half wig. Okay. Boss lady. Curls and kinks. All curl types from 3B to 4C. Color 2. This is so freaking pretty. Do you guys see that? Like, look at this. I should take the stock card out so you can see it better than the plastic glaring on it. But it's called Boss Lady by um sensational y'all know i'll be like team sensational hey team sensational textured half wig i'm so excited about trying this one i'm not going to do this one today because my hair isn't prepared for it so i'll do it when i'm i'm well you know what i'm saying after my surgery but i'm going to start one of the videos today for them so you know sam's beauty is a online wig website they got like the best shit ever and they have bundles. So, bitches, if you want some bundle hair, you don't even have to buy it from AliExpress. You don't even have to get your closures from there. You know what I'm saying? They got their own shit. Bam! They got bundles, bitches. They got bundles, bitches. Okay? 
Alley Hairs is what it's called. And this is the box that it comes in. And they have loads of bundles. And I wanted to make me a half wig for a minute now with just kinky straight hair. You guys know I love kinky straight hair. And I did actually make me one. But then I was like, ah, I'll make another one after that. But then I realized I didn't have any kinky straight hair. Okay. So when I seen they have like a really good deal on bundle hairs, okay, and frontals and stuff, I said, I'm going to do this as a review. Now, it doesn't come with the closure, unfortunately, but I didn't want a closure. I just wanted to make a half wig, okay? So it came with three bundles, and you have to, of course, pick your length, and it came with three bundles. I think it was like 80 bucks, if I'm not mistaken. So I got 20, 18, and a 16-inch bundle, and I already opened it up. This hair feels amazing, like... This is like some hair that you know you get overseas and stuff. It's virgin hair, got the tags and everything, and it's called Alley Hairs. And I'm not really sure why they call it Alley Hairs because it's not really AliExpress. You know, they got Alley Baba. They got, well, most of these sites that sell overseas that are Asian-based are called Alley. So I guess that's why they say it's Alley Hair so that way you know, like, you get some bundle hair. But this hair is actually really, really nice. You can perm it. You can dye it. You can bleach it. Like, I'm so excited because I love kinky straight hair. And this is not like that kinky straight textured texture. It's the one that I prefer. Like, I made a couple of wigs out of. So it's in between to me, like in between yakky and kinky. But it's very soft. And I'm so excited about this. And I'm going to leave it this color because I want it to look like it's mine. I mean, well, you know, it's going to look like it's mine anyway. But in the box, it comes with these bomb ass lashes. I wish I would have seen these like yesterday. Because then I wouldn't have put the ones on that I have on today. But whatever. Like, you know, it comes with lashes like you get from AliExpress. And it also comes with a black stocking cap. So, yes, I'm excited about Sam's Beauty Alley here. So you definitely want to check it out. I did end up buying, like, some closures from them a few days ago. Because they had, like, this big Black Friday sale. And it also has Cyber Monday sale, which is still going on today. I'm not really sure about Wednesday when you guys check it out. You still may want to check because they have some really good prices on regular 4x4 closures and even like 2x6 closures and all kinds of things. So, you know, I did buy a bunch of stuff from them. Plus, also from Amazon, I bought like some closures because you guys know they do sell them on there. And those ones are really good on Amazon, especially if you have Prime and get free shipping. And the prices are really good. So, and they're all virgin hair. So, I am i don't think I'm going to do AliExpress anymore, like, for certain shit. Like, I don't know. But anyway, you guys, I love you. I hope you have, like, a great day. Just remember that I will be in surgery tomorrow for a hysterectomy. So, I won't be able to respond to any comments like that, like that. But I love you guys. Wish me well. You know what I'm saying? I love you. You can hit me up. Send me a comment. Send me a DM in my freaking Instagram. You know, I love you. Stay deep and deep delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys on the other side. And also, rest in peace to Sugar. I love her. And, you know, I feel a lot better talking to you guys, so thank you for listening. Um, I